Okay. So it should be popping us up on Facebook soon. Did you hear back from Sarah? Okay. Hello, can you guys hear us? Testing. Hello. Hi. <laughs> can you hear us? Hello. I'm sure they can. It's worked every other time. <laughs> she says yes. They can hear us. So we'll just give it a few more minutes. Just let people log on and hold off in hopes that Sarah makes it. Thank you for confirming that y'all can hear us. It looks like my dogs are going to take a nap tonight. <laughs> I was worried they were going to be crazy again, but they I took them out like right before. And so now they're just like pooped. <laughs> just bribe them with treats. Go, go hide somewhere. <laughs> All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can go ahead. Um, you can go ahead. Uh, thank, thank you. <laughs> Somebody said they like my backdrop. It's much better than the closet doors that I had the other day. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can go ahead and start the introduction. Uh oh, hey, Ketty, can you hold on a second? Sorry, somebody said they can only hear me. I forgot to switch a sound setting. Uh, it's okay, though. At least we didn't get too far into it and somebody said something. Okay, testing. Can y'all talk for a second? Testing, testing. Hello. Okay, okay, it's working now. You guys can hear them now? Do a testing again. Testing. Testing. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good. All right, let's go again. All right. <laughs> Take it over two. <laughs> Hey everybody in Facebook land. Uh, my name is Ketty Van Dyke and I am the middle school and high school counselor at FWAFA. Um, one of my favorite parts of my job is helping kids apply to college and so uh, I'm happy to be here today in support of that. Um, so we are on night three of our college Q&A. 
Uh, and tonight we're talking to our visual artists um, with us so far and hopefully to be joined. But so far we have Ella Walters, who is a recent Fafa alumni. Congratulations. And hopefully Sarah Law will, will join us in just a second. Um, all right, Ella, so your first question is, can you tell us um, how many schools you applied to and which schools you applied to? Yes, so um, I applied to one, two, three, four, five. I, I applied to five. Technically, one is like split into two, but I'll talk about that later probably. Um, I applied to Pratt Institute, um, School of Visual Arts, uh, School of the Arts Institute in Chicago, Rhode Island School of Design, and Massachusetts School of Art and Design, something like that. Um, and then I am going to um, Pratt uh, Institute, but I'm going to um, to their like separate campus called Pratt Munson Williams Proctor uh, in like upstate New York. And um, I'm going there for two years and then I'm gonna transfer. Um, uh, so just joining us is Sarah Law. Sarah Law just also graduated this year. We're so excited to have her. Um, Sarah, can you tell us which schools you apply to? You're muted. Here. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, I was babysitting completely, lost track of time, so sorry about that. Um, I applied to Savannah College of Art and Design and California College of the Arts, and I was intending on going to Savannah College of Art and Design, but due to COVID, I will be attending community college and then transferring. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, the application process for visual artists is pretty different than a lot of other college application processes. So can you guys tell us like what steps you took and what, what you had to do along the way? Um, yeah, well, so basically you, um, you have to set up a, like a portfolio. A lot of schools do it through this website called Slide Room, but some schools have their own um, separate website that they do it from like I think all of mine except for one or two did it through slide room and it makes it really easy because you can just like copy and paste your portfolio um and it's generally if you okay so first of all this is mostly for like a uh fine art like painting sculpture drawing printmaking type thing um, they also like most everything is kind of the same uh, application portfolio wise, but if you're like going to be a film student in art school or um, any like there's a few different ones that stray from this like base application process. But basically you whatever you want to apply for you'll send in around 12 to 20 images of your art. And then um, also sometimes they have a separate uh, prompt, like uh, R Rhode Island School of Design has their, each year has their own prompt for you to create an art piece for them specifically. So everyone's really different, um, but it does all kind of center around a portfolio. Yeah, and um, something interesting that I kind of learned throughout that process is that some colleges do look for more technical aspects and layouts of the portfolios, like they want uh, this many figure drawings, or there's like different things that different colleges want, and some prefer more of, you know, understanding your creative side and how your thought process is. So it kind of depends on the college, whether it's more based on cre not creativity or um What's the word I'm looking for? It's just, it, uh, it's different by college, which is interesting. And I didn't really understand that before applying. Yeah, that <laughs> is definitely true. That's why I think it's really important if anybody is planning on applying for any kind of art school to go to uh, their local like national portfolio day, because mm -hmm. um, then you can like literally talk to the schools that you wanna go to and ask them questions and show them your portfolio about like what they want specifically so that you you might want to send different art to different schools depending on what they want like Sarah was talking yes. about and where do they do that that national portfolio day 
So um, I think here it's at the Anatole, but it, there's one in like a lot, like there's one close to anybody basically. Um, you just kind of have to go on the website. I think it's set up by School of Visual Arts, um, but it's really helpful. Is that something that uh, the fine arts teachers shared with you guys? Do they kind of coach you through that at all? Or does Ketty help with that? Um, I think that it's kind of like a, like, I think I actually heard it from my friends, but I think Miss Van Dyke did tell me to go to it. And I was like, I did, I'm going to, don't worry. <laughs> um, but it's not really something like, it's more something to do by yourself, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, I went with friends, so, um, yeah. That's probably better that way anyways. It's always yeah. weird wandering around those kinds of things alone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I guess um, y'all talked about your portfolios. What, what was it that drew you to the schools you chose? Do you want to go, Sarah? Sure. Um, so for me, like, I don't know, I guess what drew me to the schools that I was looking at is, for me, atmosphere is a big deal because I'm very affected by things and people around me. So, I mean, some schools have more of like a less artsy energy, I guess, but it's easier for me to be inspired and to be able to work creatively when I'm surrounded by creativity so with the schools I was looking at, I mean, California College of the Arts, for example, is known for its um, sustainability program. And I'm really into sustainable design, sustainable fashion. So that really drew me to it. And then Savannah College of Art and Design is, um, it's a pretty well-known art school. A lot of successful people have gone there and there's many networking opportunities. So it's kind of a mix of like technical, you know, networking opportunities and seeing what programs they have, how they're rated, because seeing whether the programs are looked upon in a good way is really important because it does kind of reflect what you should expect for that class. Right. So like the reputation is, is yes. helpful. Yeah. Um, something that I, well, first of all, I got, I was lucky enough to be able to go on like a visit um, up on like the, northeast coast to be able to visit the schools that I wanted to go to so I got to tour RISD which is beautiful Providence Rhode Island beautiful um and then I also got to tour um Pratt which is event which was good because it's eventually where I decided to go and then I got to look around the other two campuses that are up there and I think those are real. if you are able to do that at all, even if you do like a virtual um, tour, because I know that a lot of like counselors can set that up for you. Um, it's really helpful to like figure out where you want to go, which is I'm sure true for all colleges, but especially for arts colleges to see like the space you're going to be working in and like what kind of um, like just the atmosphere of yeah. the whole campus is really important to kind of uh, for an art student to be inspired by, I right. guess. You so. want to know that you're going to vibe well there. I think too, yeah. like as like artists, we're like more sensitive to like the aesthetics of where mm -hmm. we're at. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, who, who did you feel like, was your like biggest support in the process? Um, like parents, teachers, counselors, friends? Um, I think definitely my mom was a really big support for me because she did, she was the only person that came with me on my college tours yeah. and it was really fun. And um, she helped me a lot through the application process because it is kind of stressful sometimes to apply for colleges. I will be honest with you guys. Um, so yeah, so I think definitely my mommy, it was very good to have her around. Um, and then also my friend Josh uh, goes to Pratt and he's gonna be a sophomore this year. And so he was also a lot of help, like, awesome. um, at, like asking for advice on applications and stuff like that. 
Um, for me, I'd say it was probably a mix between like friends, my mom and one of my teachers that I'm very close with because um, I guess getting different perspectives about things, especially, you know, with friends that are art students and friends that aren't and kind of just feeling out my different college opportunities. It also really helped me to just talk to other classmates and see where they were going and see their reasoning. Because I feel like a lot of times, you know, with colleges, you have a bias and you have one or two that you're kind of set on, but you don't fully, you know, let those other options register. And that's kind of where I was stuck on is that I couldn't really see any other colleges than a few. So I only applied to a few, which is fine. You don't have to apply to a bunch, but um, it's helpful to get other opinions so you can try and inform yourself. For sure. How long did y'all work on your portfolios? Like when did you start prepping for your college uh, applications? Well, I think I, it's kind of hard to say because it's not like I sat on one day and filmed my audition. I like submitted a piece in my portfolio that I did like two years ago. That I, when I did it, I wasn't even thinking about college. Right. Um, so it really, like you could say I started two years ago, but um, it definitely, I don't know. It's just kind of like, you have to set aside time to like figure out what you have and then figure out what you need and then spend as much time like figuring that out, I guess. Yeah, to kind of fill in <laughs> so, the gap. Yeah, like like making art right. that you need to is it important yeah. for your um, for your portfolio to be um, what's the word? I guess like collective. Like, is there like a common theme, um, or is it like can you just kind of pull a bunch of your pieces? I know that Sarah mentioned like they want to see some of the technical skills and things. Also, um, I don't know what uh, does the portfolio look like. So for port. Blah, blah, blah. For portfolios, a lot of times you get to choose your own theme and kind of make your pieces to work around it. You can incorporate past pieces if it fits with your theme. Like um, for me, I my portfolio theme was kind of like um, focusing on individuality and how people express themselves differently. I mean, I know that some people had different ones and they, you know, use that theme to tie everything together and make it cohesive. Yeah, definitely. And also like, like what I was saying, or what Sarah, I can't remember. One of us said something about different schools wanting different things. Um, and so that also kind of depends on it. Usually, or as far as I know, schools don't ask for like a themed portfolio, but I think that it definitely could be helpful for you. I used to think, this is something that I learned like after, or maybe like in the middle of me creating my application, is that I was under the impression that you had to make like, like if you were gonna apply for art school, you needed to have like this amount of like portraits, this amount of landscapes, this amount of like uh, technical and like conceptual or like this this many figure drawings. Like like I had to make sure I included all everything that I could do. But um, when I talked to some people at Portfolio Day, they told me that that's not really the case. Like they just really kind of want to see what you're good at and what you're proud of. So if you're really into portraits, then you can submit like 12 portraits and that is okay. Uh, some, but some schools do ask for a certain amount of figure drawing specifically just to like see your technical skill a little bit. Um, but other than that, usually you're kind of free to do really whatever you want and you don't have like less of a chance to yeah. go than someone who had like an extremely diverse portfolio yeah um to add on to that I think it's I was kind of under that same impression too and I felt like technical aspects were more important than the um than you know what you really wanted to put in it because I felt like there had to be a certain amount of things and they had to look a certain way and 
I kind of learned throughout this whole applying process that this application or, you know, portfolios are them getting to know you and your art. It's not necessarily all about your technical skills and it's not entirely about your style, but it's really important to make sure that you have some of yourself in that portfolio because it reflects you and what you want to do. I think that's great. I think that's very helpful. Um, so before we open it up to see if anyone has questions, the last thing I wanna ask y'all is, and each of you can take turns answering, but what is like one piece of advice um, that you would offer like students and parents that are working through um, this part of the process? Um, well, I think that maybe I would tell them that, well, first of all, I think that my one bit of advice would be go to Portfolio Day, <laughs> as I've already said, because it is so helpful to like, it, even if you don't actually gain any good information from the schools, it's still good to have practice, like showing people your portfolio and getting getting feedback on stuff that isn't like from your teacher or your mom or something like it's it's just really important but also um i think that it's really easy to get really stressed out about uh each piece that you put in your portfolio like it's really easy to like nitpick everything but it's really okay <laughs> and like it's it, they're looking to see, they don't want to see someone that's not you, I guess. Like the whole point is that they want um, you to be yourself and send in art that you like, even if you don't think, even if you, you like your art a lot, but you don't think anybody else would, it's okay. You can submit it and it's going to be okay. <laughs> and I just think it's really easy to get worked up about little stuff in art portfolios. So that is <laughs> she muted again? You're so. muted. <laughs> Sorry, I have kids running in and out, so I'm trying to make sure they don't make noise. Um, so I think the one piece of advice I have is more geared towards students, but um, don't compare yourself because I found that actually I found that you know in my trying to um, become a better artist. I really compared myself, Hi, baby. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, um, trying to better my art and my technical skills. I kind of compared myself to other people and other classmates and that really halted my growth. And even like comparing schools that other people were going to and feeling like less you know, less successful or less of an artist because I wasn't going to a place like that or my art wasn't the same as theirs because it's, you know, judging yourself based on what other people do is going to make it harder for you to grow as an artist. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. So cute. Me too. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up for questions. Y'all can feel free to send them into the comment box if you have any questions for these ladies. Um, just a reminder, they are talking about visual arts, um, basically building their portfolios for college applications. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question while we're waiting. So you guys, all the schools that you listed that you applied to are very specific art or art and design schools. Can you talk about why you chose that rather than like a traditional university? That's good. Um, so for me, I think a big thing about choosing an art college over a more traditional university is the networking opportunities. Because, I mean, with a school that is centered around art, it is much easier to find future job opportunities, internships. And even though it is a, uh, it is a belief for some people that art college is risky, if you are really passionate about art, it is honestly 
I think it's beneficial to go to an art college because it's also more widely known and, you know, among the art community. So if you say you go to a certain art college, it's perceived that you are an artist rather than, I don't know, just networking opportunities is the main thing for me. Yeah, I think that this is true for like any college, but going to a school that a lot of people know the name of just makes you kind of feel better. It's not important. I think that um, I think that if you go to school for art, you'll probably get or any school, any like name school for art that is centered around that, um, you'll get better teachers who care about you more and also a lot better resources because mm -hmm. if you go to a non-art specific school their art department is not the whole thing it's mm -hmm. like a small part maybe a building maybe two buildings but going to an art centric school is really um uh, like it just helps you get all the resources that you need and like um yeah i don't know like also, a lot of our schools have pretty good like teacher to student ratios because there's just not that many of either. So <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I just think that I feel more comfortable in an environment like that too, so. I think that's a good point. And while you were talking about that, I kind of thought about the connection between like, you know, an art school or a school centered around some sort of fine art and FWAPA because, you know, rather than going to you know, for example, a public school, going to FWAFA means that there's more focus on the artistic elements of learning. So when, I mean, I guess it's sort of the same idea of when you go to an art school rather than a university with art, but it's not centered around art. It's a university that specializes in it. So you're going to get, you know, not necessarily a better education, but you're going to have, like you said, tools and materials that you need, possibly slightly better teachers so just stuff like that <laughs> this sounds like overall the quality of life would be better um you know if you're if you want to be fully immersed in yeah. arts it's because everybody is going to be kind of on the same page as you yeah um mr Byerlip asked his question is how much do you miss physics <laughs> I'm going to be honest with him. <laughs> Not much. Yeah. There Not you go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no disrespect or anything, but I was never much of a uh, physics person. <laughs> it's not my thing. Not very good at it. <laughs> I do miss you, Mr. Byerlip. I will be honest. I bet also. everybody misses his dink memes. Oh, maybe a little. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, someone else asked, uh, how important is your academic record for art schools? That's a good question. Oh, that is a good question. Um, so not as important, obviously. I th Something that um, is was told to me at some point is that it's kind of like if you, okay, if you have a really, really good portfolio, like really good and uh, the art school really wants you they could not even look at your test scores or your GPA like they could just be like this is good but <laughs> it is important um, in like a way so if if they're looking at two portfolios and they're like both of these are great and I love them both very much but you, someone else's it's gonna be has a tiebreaker a basically yeah your higher yeah higher test score than yours then they're gonna get it so it's definitely not like dependent on it but it's um still important i think it also does depend on the school you're trying to get into because some of the schools that i was looking at like they outright said you know it's while it's a good thing to have a higher gpa for example you can't really judge artistic skills on the ability to have excellent grades in school so while it is still good to have higher grades if you can it really depends on art colleges and some of them to be honest do not care <laughs> yeah yeah and like um 
you can definitely obviously like look up the average GPA for any of these schools, but that really won't tell you, like if, if the average is like 3.6, if you have a 3.3, that is not saying that you won't get in. It just depends on the person. So that did remind me when you were talking about that, this isn't directly related to the question, but this is a really, really helpful tool that helped me kind of understand applying for college and helped me understand what you needed to get into an art school. I believe the app is called College Hunch and it shows all sorts of statistics for the students, the graduation rate, which is important to look at, the average GPA of people accepted, um, even like, uh, male to female ratio like everything and it's really really helpful especially since I really did not know what I was doing that helped me sort things out a lot so I would definitely suggest it for people who are trying to figure out where to go and you know want to compare the colleges to see which is best for them all right another question um have your universities announced anything about how they are handling COVID this fall? And uh, I think we commented on that quickly in, in the beginning. Um, so Ella, Ella had said that she hasn't heard much from her university yet other than she is going. <laughs> um, and then Sarah, you had decided to actually stay local for now um, because of COVID. So. Yes, I will also say my, um, uh, my school, it, we're going, but they said that some of the classes will be online still, just will be in our dorms. And then some of them will be like in classrooms, which I think is true for a, a few other schools in New York too, like NYU is doing that too. Yeah, I believe a lot of the East Coast is still, um, they're being very conservative still. Yeah. So it'll probably be much different for you since you'll be going up there as opposed to people who would be in Texas. Um, I don't know how they're handling it differently. All right, well, we're running out of time. Um, so I wanna go ahead and just say thank y'all for, for joining us and doing this. It's really awesome to hear all of the different perspectives. Um, of course, as an art student, this is one of my favorites. Yes, thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Oh, I love y'all's here, I just love it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right, everybody have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye.